Thank you for learning Siebel with the Siebel Hub. We have a unique, comprehensive and always up-to-date collection of Siebel CRM 2021 training classes. We can deliver live online and on-site training in the highest quality with the most experienced instructors. And we also offer a unique modular Siebel CRM 20 and 21 training. Follow the links in the description or on this slide to learn more and learn Siebel with the Siebel Hub. Hey, hey, welcome. Here's Alex from Black Sheep IT Consulting. Uh, welcome to the Siebel CRM update 21.4 highlights. So in 21.4, just released on 19th of April 2021, uh, we find uh, two updates to Siebel Web Tools. So Web Tools is on its way to reach parity with the legacy tools. Not anytime soon that Siebel Tools will go away, but um, definitely a way forward. So we find the full availability of the new web service creation wizard. So that's the first wizard that appears in web tools. And in limited availability, there is the workflow simulator or debugger in Siebel web tools now. Uh, we're going to have a deeper look into that in a few moments. Um, also, an update has been made to the post-installation database update. Uh, there is a new option there, so we take a look at that. And uh, Zookeeper gets an update to 3.6.2. And that update comes with several files and folder name changes that are quite significant. And there is a new Tomcat version 9.0.4.3. So let's dive into the details a little bit. So the uh, first official wizard has arrived in Web Tools. It's the Web Tools variant of the Web Service or Whistle slash JSON import wizard that is in Siebel Tools, of course, and now it's appears in Web Tools. There's a new icon, a, a magic wand, and the interesting fact about the wizards or this wizard and maybe future wizards, we do not know that at the moment of this recording but they will be likely built with Task UI as the first wizard. So Siebel Task UI is deployed here. And uh, when you select the only wizard at that moment from the pop-up that appears when you click the magic wand, the web service and click start, uh, you get a nice comprehensive task UI that guides you through the process of actually uploading a JSON or Whistle file and then checking the details and then creating the proxy business services and integration objects. So let's take a quick look at the first of hopefully many wizards in web tools. So 21.4 introduces the magic wand icon on the top right corner. If you click that prematurely and you have don't have a workspace, you get an error. So let's create a test workspace real quick. All right, so now that we have a workspace, just close the dashboard again and click the magic wand. And there you go. There's one wizard available in the object list applet now that is already selected. So let's click start and the wizard starts using Siebel Task UI, by the way, and you can upload the files. So let's use the notorious pet store JSON file here that you can get from the internet. Uh, notice that it also can use be used to upload Whistle files for SOAP web services. And on clicking next, uh, it's going to use the infrastructure for the updated outbound REST to use the uh, Tomcat server and get XML back. You see there's a results panel and files uh, can be downloaded to so the original JSON file, but also the intermediate XML files that are produced by the uh, Tomcat 
and it's good to keep them maybe for later, but you don't really need to download them. Uh, submitting actually generates the announced uh, proxy business services and integration objects in that workspace that you have currently open. And hopefully you see a success message like here and notice there are new files to be downloaded. Uh, if you want to download them, make sure you do so before you finish the wizard because those files will be deleted. So there's a log file. There's also a runtime configuration data file, which is the outbound REST service definition that you can use to import into the outbound REST services view. Uh, but you don't actually need to in the same environment. It could be useful for migrating uh, to other environments, but not in this environment since it's already in the database. So let's just verify the content of the workspace here. And indeed the workspace now has the business service and integration objects ready for testing. And let's verify the outbound REST service definition, which has been created by the wizard and imported into the database as well. So let's find the outbound REST services view. And here indeed, there's the outbound REST service definition. The uh, workflow process simulator has arrived in WebTools with 21.4, but very importantly, it's only available to customers signed up to Oracle Siebel CRM Limited Availability or LA program. Uh, there is a statement in Bookshelf, which is printed here, that the process simulator is supported only for those customers who are signed up to the LA program. For all other customers, quote, the process simulator is not supported in web tools. It is supported only in Siebel tools, unquote. So what this means is possibly that the simulator shouldn't be visible to customers unless they have signed into the limited availability program, but intentional or not, uh, Web tools after updating to 21.4 sports the simulator icon, and you can run it. Although it has to be noted that unless you are in the LA program, it's not supported to do so. There is a new icon which uh, has been mentioned, so that icon can be clicked, and there's a menu item as well, so you can get into simulator mode. The workflow is shown in the simulator along with the workflow process data, so aka watch window. Internally, it uses the same debug service that has been introduced in 20.11 with the script debugger. So that service needs to be in place. And like the script debugger, when you start the simulation, it launches the Siebel application in a new browser tab and you have to log into that application session which loads the current workspace etc and then the usability for developer or the developer experience is very similar to Siebel tools legacy so you step through the workflow process the steps are executed error messages are displayed or not and you can inspect the process properties in the right hand side panel uh, left-hand side, and you can inspect the properties in the left-hand side workflow process data panel, which is very much like the watch window in Siebel tools. The next change we see in 21.4 is a subtle change when you run the update using the MDE installer, of course, which is in place since 21.2. You find in the post-installation database update options panel or page, you find instead of a simple checkbox to skip uh, and execute later, or not at all, uh, the process, you, have an uh, you now have a drop down which has more or less three options to just execute 
the post installation database update after uh, installing the binaries, which is kind of the default thing you do on your first SES update on the first machine. So you know the post install database update has to be run once per environment, per Siebel database. And possibly when you do the second Siebel server, you choose skip because you have already done it. And there's a third option now, which is actually the new thing, is the defer generate DDL files only option. So that option runs the post installation database update in a kind of dry run mode, and it only generates DDL files, which contain the necessary schema changes, the delta schema changes for executions in a separate session against the database. You could give these files to the DBA. Uh, executing those DDL files is not actually doing the post install database update. It's just a part of it, the schema part. Uh, so you can generate those files to run them separately on against the database or inspect them first or evaluate, etc. But you still have to, if you choose the defer option, you still have to run post install database update manually if you haven't already executed it against your environment database. So now let's talk about the Zookeeper update. So uh, Zookeeper 3.4.8 has been with us since Siebel 17.0. So that's a long time now, that's almost four years. Um, and so in 21.4 we get a Zookeeper update, which is the first of its kind in the Siebel 17 plus architecture, the first update to the registry. Uh, 3.6.2 is the Zookeeper version that we get. Uh, the installer lays it down and copies over and renames folders and files. So that is actually done automatically. And the MDE has a habit of restarting the <laughs> gateway and the Siebel server on that machine. Uh, to kind of prove that it works. Um, the renames are quite significant if you have any custom scripts, for example, that you uh, employ to, for example, do backups of the version 2 folder. You have to note that the main folder name where the Zookeeper now resides is called Registry. And the original Zookeeper folder is renamed to Zookeeper underscore backup for, of course, to retrieve any information or files that you have to do. Uh, the Zoo1.cfg file, that strange named file that we are gotten accustomed to, is now renamed to registry.cfg. It's basically the content is copied over, but also modified during the upgrade. Uh, you see in the screenshot, you see the registry CFG with the settings from, well, the initial installation, but also the notice that the data directory parameter has been obviously updated. And there are two new parameters. One is actually admin.enable server set to false to actually not enable the admin server, which is a feature that Zookeeper 3.5 introduces. So in theory, you could enable the admin server, which provides you with a simple HTTP interface to get, for example, statistics uh, and runtime information of Zookeeper. But Oracle decided to turn it off by default. The version 2 folder with the snapshot and log files has been moved to the registry slash conf folder. So there's there's a new path there. So if you have any scripts that um, you use to create backups of, of, of your uh, Siebel Enterprise registry, then you must, of course, modify these scripts. And there's one important thing that Oracle mentions, um, and that is, of course, logical. Uh, the new Zookeeper starts working and it starts running and obviously you shouldn't be restoring a backup from your old Zookeeper version into the new one. So it might be a good thing to, when the upgrade has been done successfully to Zookeeper, which is very, very likely, then um, take your time and take a fresh backup 
the first thing you do. So you have a 3.6 backup. So you can discard the 3.4 backups and never ever try to restore the backup from a older version of Zookeeper into a new one. Okay, so uh, let's take a look at the Zookeeper changes in 21.4. So in the gateway server directory, you will find after the update, you will find your old Zookeeper renamed to Zookeeper underscore backup. And the new Zookeeper is now under the new folder called registry. It has two subfolders, conf and Zookeeper. In a conf folder, you'll find the new CFG file and the version 2 folder, which holds your snapshots and log files. The registry.cfg file replaces the su1.cfg file. And the uh, yeah, Zookeeper folder itself has the Zookeeper binaries and Java libraries and so forth. So significant changes here, make sure that any custom scripts in this area is updated as well. Uh, let's take a quick look at the Zookeeper process. So that Java program, Java process that we see in Windows, it runs as usual being wrapped by the gateway registry service, the Siebel gateway service, but you see the new path reflected here. So definitely it runs from the new folders and not the old one. Okay, thank you very much and bye-bye.